for the individuals that are out there saying you can't do things, don't listen to them because they can't do things. I have never cared what someone said they can't do. It's never been a determiner for what I'm gonna do with my life or for how successful I think I will be in anything in my entire life. Because what was that, what was that famous quote? Uh, those who think they can and those who think they can't are usually right. 100%, I 100% agree with that. If they are saying you can't make money or earn a substantial living doing X, Y, and Z, they're right, they can't. That's all there is to it. But you can, you can do whatever you want. What's going on everybody? Joel here from State 48 Exotics. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about investing in ball pythons. And we're also gonna hear from Phoenix, obviously, uh, who's letting us all know that he wants to be part of this conversation. <laughs> oh my gosh, so Phoenix is absolutely going ballistic right now if you all haven't noticed. So we're gonna have to go step into the office. Yeah, yeah, dude, I get it. All right, all right. I'll give you your space, dude. Jeez, that guy always trying to get into every conversation. Okay, so here we are, back in the snake room, right? The, uh, the oasis here. So a few quick disclaimers before we like start getting into more and more of this video. Um, if you're jumping into this industry because you wanna drive a Lambo and a Ferrari and be touring the world and traveling to Guam or you know wherever, wherever you're trying to go, Bali I think is a good one, I don't know. Wherever you may be trying to go and live this lavish lifestyle, uh, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work because if you don't have an insane desire to work with these animals and enjoy being in a snake room that smells primarily like snakes, you're just not gonna be successful because you're gonna need to constantly be in here and thinking about the future and your quality of care has to be just through the roof because if you if you start selling these snakes and they're sick or they're not taken care of or it starts to look like you don't know how to adequately give these animals the best life possible, people are gonna catch on and they're not gonna wanna buy from you. And that's good. You don't deserve to sell these animals and you certainly don't deserve to be raising these animals. That, that is number one on the list is snake care. Snake care is the absolute number one on the list. Before you can do anything else in the future with these animals or whatever your intentions are, the snake care has to come first. And I think that's something that is often overlooked a lot of times and that's what causes all of these mass collection sales is because people come into this industry, they buy these giant, giant collections, they get all this stuff, and then they realize, wow, I never even really liked snakes, I just wanted to make money. And let me tell you right now, that's not gonna cut it. Additionally, uh, another random little disclaimer here, everything I'm about to really talk about right now in this video is just my own meandering experience and what I have seen throughout the past, you know, three, four years really being involved in this community and in this industry. And so there's a wide range of really things that could work for you and not work for me or work for someone else and not for you. And so that's kind of something you have to consider as well. And that's gonna be primarily what I talk about, obviously, in this video and with all of my videos is just my own experience. And a lot of that experience directly comes from the Reptiles Unplugged channel where Adam and I from Beach Brum Exotics host different people from around the industry and get their insights into their business structure and their projects. With my experience, along with said experience on Reptiles Unplugged, I started to notice some trends in successful people versus unsuccessful people in the hobby. And I can kind of really break those down into three things. Um, foresight into your projects, knowing what you really want, seeking out, finishing things, really, 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 really high level of focus. Two is social media, really working, branding, making your, making your mark, 
setting out your niche, showing everybody what you're about, um, all of those things are tremendous. And then three, going to reptile expos. It is, it is tremendously important to be attending these reptile expos so that you can network and talk to people and meet all of the other breeders out there. You can see projects where they're going, et cetera, et cetera. And so right off the bat, something that I feel like is, is almost the most important thing you can really focus on is your projects. And not just your projects, but the foresight into knowing where those projects are going, um, where they're at now, and what you can really do with them. What I'm saying is, is I feel long gone are the days where you can go out and buy 150 snakes, start up all of this infrastructure and all of that stuff, all with, you know, single genes, like, you know, your single gene codons, pastels, Mojaves, Lessers, uh, black pastels, any of those, and just pump out snakes. Like, that isn't where it's at anymore. You, 20 years ago, that was definitely where it's at. When there was only 15, 16 big name breeders that were really out there giving the entire industry their wealth of ball pythons. Um, it's just not where it's at right now. And, and I really feel like the market and the industry is diving straight into boutique breeding where people are specialized. They're really focused on their specific projects and they're really innovating and pushing things in the right direction. And a really big problem I see with having those giant, giant collections like that, tremendous costs. The amount of money that you're going to be spending on rats, tubs, paper towels, deli cups, all of that stuff, not to mention the amount of time it's going to take to manage that many animals, it's just, it's going to be so hard to get a return unless maybe you are really hooked up into the wholesale side of things, which, you know, is kind of a subject all on its own to really talk about. But for me, the idea of wholesaling, not exactly knowing where all my animals are going, just didn't seem like something I really wanted to do when I was first getting into this. And the other thing I think that's super important when it comes to projects and, and really focusing and honing your craft is the fact that you really need to be, in my opinion, working with recessives. And you need to be working with recessives because they retain their value longer, strictly on a monetary basis. There's obviously no difference between a normal ball python and a clown pie desert ghost, except for our intrinsic value that we've put on these animals, right? It takes the same amount of time to raise a single gene animal as it takes to raise a recessive animal, but your overall room for profit is, I would say, unless it's, you know, stranger confusion acid, you know, all those new codons and stuff like that, it's triple, triple if not quadruple the value in the long run. And so that's what I'm really saying about thinking about the future and, and moving forward with your projects and being very specific and, and buying with intent, not just buying to have the snake. I, I, think, I think there's a time and place to buy to have the snake. If it's a pet, if that's what you really wanna do, you buy the prettiest snake or the snake that you love the most. All right, so now we have a rough idea that you really need to be very specific on your projects, buying with intent, and I feel really focused on the recessive market and moving forward with that. So let's talk a little bit about just social media and branding, which is our number two. So social media and branding, I feel like is, so these are all really important. I don't, they're not really, I guess, in any specific order, but social media, branding, getting yourself out there and showing people who you are, what you have available and what you're all about, I think is, is tremendously important. People love meeting other goobers like yourself that love reptiles. Like there isn't many of us out there, right? Like this isn't normal. This is this is this is shocking. Like if if somebody came in here with a news camera from Arizona's local news, they would be like, "What? You have that many snakes in here? That's crazy." And I really don't even have a lot. I mean, I have like 24, 25 adults. Like that's a very small number when you consider what most people in this industry really have. And so it's extremely important to get yourself out there. Instagram, I think, is a beautiful place. It's, it's you can showcase your pictures, you can showcase how pretty your animals are, and you can really get people involved with what you are trying to do. And that's the big part of this, is, is really selling yourself. Like, 
you need to be out there and representing yourself in the best way you possibly can at every interaction. And Instagram is great for that because you can take a still shot of a gorgeous animal and you can show people, hey, I'm doing this X, Y, Z, what would you do? And then you can get interactions from people. It's just, it's a great, great, great platform and I absolutely love it. And that can't be said more for YouTube. YouTube is tremendous. If you're not currently making videos and you're not currently making videos regularly, you are missing out. This is such an amazing platform. Name another platform that literally pays you to put content on its site. I mean, that's, that's what YouTube's doing for us. You know, obviously I'm not making any real money on YouTube. I think I'm at $20 a month right now, which is, you know, that's, you know, it's better than nothing. Uh, it's 20 more dollars than I had without doing it. So that's kind of cool. It does add up, you know, at the end of the year, $20 a month, that's not too shabby. But what YouTube really does, it gives, it gives people an opportunity to know who you are. And that's the coolest part about all this is I feel like long gone also are the days of just buying from random people. Like I know everybody I buy snakes from, whether it be uh, social media interaction, face-to-face uh, -face interaction, or something along those lines. I don't really know what other kind of interaction there could be, but those are obviously the big two. Like I speak with everyone that I actually buy snakes from. And that's likewise to me. Like. Everyone talks to me that purchases any animals from me. And I think that, that this is a great place to do that. So I guess my point there is, is if you've been on the fence with making YouTube videos or content or doing any of those things, this is your sign, right? Your, your sign, your sign. This is your sign to start. Start up your channel, put yourself out there, talk about your animals, show your passion. People love it. I love it. I love. I don't even have cable anymore. I watch YouTube. That's pretty much my only source of TV is just watching YouTube. It's so much fun to see what KB Reptiles is doing, to see what Gavin all the way in the in the UK is doing over there. Like it's crazy. It brings this whole community together and that's the coolest thing about it. All right, so number 3, Reptile Expos. Honestly, probably one of the more common questions I get asked is, do I need to go to one of these reptile expos? Like the big shows, like the Pomona, the Anaheim Now, Tinley, Daytona, Arlington. Yes, you need to go. You absolutely need to go if, there's a big if here, if you want to move forward and take this from maybe a small hobby into that next stage. And I say that you need to go to these reptile expos, not for the snakes, but for the people. Going to these reptile expos gives you insight into what other people are doing, which is incredible. And it also allows you to meet some of these huge, huge names that, that you wouldn't often see. You know, you're not gonna really run into Justin Kabelka anywhere else. You're not gonna run into Ozzy, you know? Like some of these giant names, you're just not gonna meet them unless you go to these reptile expos. And they're there, and they're willing to talk. That's why they're there. They already know the secrets, right? Because you wanna know the funny thing, success leaves clues. You just have to look for the clues and you can be successful in anything. This isn't just the reptile industry, this is anything, right? And so it's like, you go to these reptile expos, you, you network, you meet people, and you move forward. And now people know who you are. And now, because they know who you are, they talk about you. It's really no different than any other industry in the entire United States. Like. You always have to network. You always have to meet people in your perspective field. That's that's the name of the game, right? Meeting people that share your similar interests is pivotal to bringing you up, you know? Bringing you to maybe their level or giving you knowledge that will help you gain a better perspective. And so there it is. I feel like there's my three keys to success. Just to wrap this all up, don't listen to the people saying you can't do anything. Don't listen to the people that say they can't do anything. None of that matters to you. Last but not least, thank you all so much for even taking any time to watch this video this long. This has been something that I've really been considering posting for a long time. I really didn't know how I wanted to film it, but it just, I feel like it's something that I wanted to talk about. You know, this is, this is again, this is my experience. This is everything that has happened to me over the past, you know, four years. I um, obviously am absolutely no expert, 
but you know, personal experience I feel like goes a long way and I wish more people would share their experiences when it comes to the other side of this industry, you know? Like I think this is a cool subject. Anyways, thank you all so much for tuning in. I really hope this can uh, spark some cool conversation. I would love to talk to anybody if they want to talk about more or anything like that. As always, I uh, hope you're all having a great morning, night, evening, whenever you may be watching this. And if you would like more subjects like this, a great place to check some of this stuff out is over on the Reptiles Unplugged channel. Uh, we get into a lot of nitty gritty topics like this and really dive into some of the specifics outside of ball python care. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty cool place and I have learned so much. With that, thank you all so much. Uh, until next time, we'll see y'all later.